Now, if you're someone who is working in this data analytics domain, I'm sure you'll agree with me on this. When I say Excel is a Swiss army knife for the business data analytics. The reason, well guys, Excel is such a powerful tool and it is known for jack of all trade solution. We actually use Excel for quick data storage, manipulation of the data, collaboration with the data, automating the task and so on. Now, as a data scientist who is specifically into analyzing the data, it will be a greater asset to you if you can learn to explain your statistical findings in an Excel sheet, which is what most of your users and the managers are aware of. Now, in this video, I'll walk you through the top 10 things which you can automate in Excel using our programming language. Here are some of the interesting things that we'll be performing in a hands-on manner. So, we learn to prepare the data for working with Excel sheet in our programming language. Then, we learn to plot the data to the Excel sheet. Then, we'll see how we can save the Excel notebook. Then, we'll also show you how you can open an Excel workbook from the R programming, cloning the worksheet, inserting the table to the Excel sheet, and as we proceed, we'll also look into the some of the advanced stuff like combining the plot and the table on the same Excel sheet, adding the multiple sheets for the same Excel workbook, and at the end, we'll also see how to read the workbook with multiple sheets and return the sheet names. So let's get started and I'm now already in my R studio. So let's start by loading the necessary libraries. Now in order to implement this in a hands-on manner, we'll be requiring some of the important libraries and the libraries which I'll be using right now are OpenXLSX, TinyQuant, that is, this is a library which we'll be using to load the financial data and I'm using this tidyverse obviously and I'm using this time ticking. So these are the libraries which I'll be loading right now. Now, once I load these libraries, for the first thing is we would require the data. In order to get the data, we've got a method that's called as tqget. So this is a method. Using this, we can specify what is the range and we also have to specify what are the stock names, that is, what are the company name that we want to get the stock data. In order to get the same, this is how I'll be writing the code. So I'm writing like the stock data table and I'm specifying the company names and I'm sending those company names as a first argument inside this tqget function. The outcome I'm assigning to my variable that is stock data table. Now, once this is done, let's just view how this data would look like. I'll just call view so that we can visualize it in the format of a table and I'll execute this guys. So once I execute this, we'll be able to see how does the stock data that we have have extracted from this tidy quant library. Okay. All right. This is how my data set would look like. We've got this symbol. Symbol is nothing but the stock name. Okay, I've got Amazon, I've got Google, Netflix, Nvidia, Facebook and Microsoft. So these are the stock that I have got right now from the website. Next here, I've got the information about the date, open, high, low, close, volume and the adjusted. So these are some of the stock details that I have for each and every trading day. And if you look at it, I have mentioned the range. The range that I have mentioned is till today and previous 5,000 days. So I have got the data for previous 5,000 days. You are free to specify your own data as per your preference. So for the demonstration purpose, I'm just collecting 5,000 rows if available from this library of tidyquant. So the first thing is done. We have got the data. Now let's proceed along. Next, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll create a pivot table. In order to create a pivot table, I'll say, pivot table okay and i'll write it like this i'll write as my stock data table which have just got on top of this i'll pass it into a pivot table function so i'll write it like this pivot underscore table and here inside the parenthesis i'll specify what should be my rows so 
I'll mention my rows and this is equal to my year column. Okay, I'll extract the year date. Now I'll help you understand how does my output would look like. And for the columns, I'll get the column on the basis of the symbol column that I have on this data set. And for the values, I'm going to assign the value and here I'll get a special function that is called as percentage change first last. Okay, so this is nothing but the percentage change first last. You can check the documentation of this tidy client for more information. So I'm just getting the percentage change first last over here for the column of value. Okay, and here in order to calculate this, I'll apply the column name of adjusted. Now, once that is done, I'm going to update. That means I'll rename the column. Okay, and I'll rename the column of first column to be equal to year. So this is how I'm creating a pivot table. To get the better clarity, let's view this pivot table. I'll call view stock pivot table. And so once I execute the code, this is how my pivot table would look like. See, I've got the column of year. We've got the stock name. We've got the Google, Microsoft, Netflix, Nvidia, and Facebook, and so on. So this is how our overall data set would look like. And I have created a pivot table. And while creating the pivot table for the values, I have got the value of percentage change first last, and I have considered the column of adjusted. Okay, so in this way, I have created my pivot table. Now, next, what I'll do is I'll also repeat the same thing, but I'll do some modification. Now, here for this variable, I'll call it like this stock pivot table, and I'll just call it as adjusted. Now, instead of taking the percentage change, I'll just consider the same value that is adjusted. And instead of summarizing for an year, I'll just consider the date wise. Okay, I don't want to rename, I want to keep the date as it is. I'll just keep it as it is. Now, once this is done, I'll just copy and paste it and let's visualize it. How does this pivot table would look like? Okay, this is another pivot table that I have constructed where I have a date column and I have the individual symbols that is Amazon, Google, their various stock codes. So that is so this is what we observe on this data set. Okay. Now what I'll do next thing is next I'll go ahead and I'll create a plot. So we'll have a plot and then we'll try adding it to an Excel sheet. In order to create a plot, I'll write it like this. I'll say stock underscore plot and here. For creating this stock underscore plot, I'll say SDK data table. And on this data table, I'm going to apply group by. Okay, I'll apply this group by on the symbol column that we have on this data. Okay, and then once I apply this group by, the next thing is I'll create the plot of this time series. So plot time series, this is a function that I'll be using. And for this, I'll specify my date and the column is adjusted. And here I'll get this dot color var and I want to have the color coding on the basis of symbol. Next, I'll also add some another extra parameter. So I'll say dot facet vars and I'll mention it as uh, let's consider this dot facet n column. I think that is a better representation. So number of columns, I'll set it as two. Okay. And we can set to interactive. I'll just make it as static because I want to add it back into my Excel sheet. So interactive, I'll set it as false. Okay. So this is going to create the plot for me. Now, once this is done, I'll just print my stock underscore plot. So this will help me to get the visualization as how does this plot would look like. All right. So it looks like there's a typo. Let me fix that symbol. Now let me execute the code again. Perfect. Now the plot is loading. Now let me just show you how does this plot would look like. If I show you this plot, this is how my time series plot would look like. So I have created the time series plot 
for each and every individual stock data that I have that is for Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Nvidia, Netflix and Google. So I have created a plot and I have created two pivot table. Now coming to the core part of this video, let's see how we can start by creating the workbook that is creating the Excel workbook. In order to start creating this Excel workbook, the first thing that you would need is first we have to create an object that is create workbook. Okay, so that is what we have to do. So the first part of preparing the data is done. So it's time to add it back into our workbook. So WB and I would say create workbook. Okay, next what I'll do is once we create this workbook, we have to add a worksheet to it unless and until we add a worksheet to it, we will not be able to add the data to it. So I would say add worksheet and for this inside the parenthesis, I'll specify my workbook object and I'll mention my C name as stock data analysis. So this is my sheet name that I'm going to add. Now for this sheet, Let's see how we can add our plot which we have just created in order to add a plot. See the plot is the time series plot which we have just created. Now to insert this plot into our worksheet, we've got a method that's called as insert plot and I'll write it like this WB and I'll be making use of the pipe symbol because that is what we'll be using most of the time whenever we are combining the operation and it's one of the efficient way of writing the code and I recommend you to do the same. So insert plot and for this insert plot method inside the parenthesis, I'll mention my sheet. My sheet name is stock data analysis, which we have created just now. And here I'll mention the start column. See, this is a specific control that we can have. I can mention where should I start plotting? I'll mention as I'll start plotting from the column of H. And I can also mention the start row. This is an interesting thing. I'll say start row as three. Now, once this is done, okay, this will be inserting the plot to this workbook object. Now, in order to save it, I'll say save workbook and I'll mention the object that is WB and the file name, I'll say stock data underscore analysis dot XLSX and I'll overwrite. Okay. If any file is present, I'll write it as overwrite. Now, once this is done, I'll just execute this. So this is going to save the file. Now, once it has saved the file, guys, you can access the file from your current working directory. So I have my current working directory that is get WD. So this is my current working directory. My file will be saved over here. Now, in order to open this, we've got a function that's called as open Excel. Okay. This is a function that I have and inside the parenthesis, I just have to mention the file. Since I have this file in my working directory itself, I just have to pass in my file name. And if I execute this, this is going to start my Excel sheet program. See, it is loading my Microsoft Excel sheet and you can see it has started from the column H and it has started from the row number three and I have been able to add this time series plot into my Excel sheet directly guys. Okay, so this is how we can insert a plot to our Excel sheet. Now that you know how we start coding over here in our programming language. Now let me help you and show you some of the other functionalities that we have in our programming language, which we can work and automate the things for the Excel. The next thing that I'll be showing you is how we can clone the worksheet. In order to clone the worksheet guys, here we'll call the function that is called as clone worksheet. The WB object, we have to mention the sheet name that is clone sheet. This is the new sheet name that I'm specifying and I want to clone the existing sheet that is stock data analysis. And I'm saving it into a new workbook and I'm calling it as the same name that is stock data analysis. Now ensure that before you run this code, ensure that you have closed the Excel instance and then I'm opening the same file. I'll just open this. So currently it is saving. Now it is opening this Excel file. Now let's see. See, we have created a new clone sheet 
and this is a copy of my existing sheet. So instead of right clicking and copying it, we are now able to add it as per our preference. How cool is this guys? Now I'll show you how we can add a data table. So we have created a pivot table right earlier. I'll show you how we can add the table. In order to add the data table, I'll create a new workbook. That is the workbook object. I'll add a new worksheet and I'm writing the data table to write the data table. We'll call this write data table function and we can specify the data. Here I'm saving that workbook and I'm opening that Excel sheet. So I'll execute this. So this is going to save and this is going to add this pivot table that we have generated over here into the sheet of stock data pivot. So to add the data, that is the data table, we'll make use of the method write data table method. Now, if I want to add a new data to the same worksheet, so let's say for a single worksheet, you, are, you want to add the multiple variables. So this is a demonstration where I'm creating a workbook object. I'm adding a worksheet. So for this same worksheet, I'm inserting the plot and for the same worksheet, I'm inserting the data table. I'll execute this and you'll be able to see that in a single sheet of my Excel, we have added both the things, the plot and the table, everything in a single sheet. See, table and the plot. Isn't it? Next, I'll show you one more ability. The next trick that I'll be showing you is how we can add a new sheet data. Okay, how we can add a new sheet data. In order to show you the same, here for the data that we are currently working, that is for this workbook object, I'm creating a new sheet. So I'm creating a new sheet. And once I create a new sheet, I'm writing a new data to this uh, new sheet and I'm saving it into an Excel sheet. And if I open that workbook again, you'll be able to see the magic guys. You'll be able to see that a new sheet has been added for my Excel file. So in total, I should be seeing two sheets. See one sheet which contains the and the time series plot. And in the other sheet, go, in the other sheet, I've got this data where I have the pivot data which has been collected day-wise. Okay, now that you have seen how to work with this various formats and how to format the data into the Excel sheet, let me just show you how you can read an Excel sheet from an Excel workbook which has multiple sheets. In order to read the data from the Excel workbook, we've got a method that is called as read workbook. Now this is a code where I'm calling this method of read workbook and I'll have to mention where exactly my file is present. And since this workbook contains multiple sheets to specifically convey which sheet that I'm loading here, I'm saying it as sheet is equal to two. And I'm sending everything inside this as underscore table function. If I execute this, see, I have been able to read the data from this workbook. I've been able to read this data from this workbook, guys. Okay, now moving on. The last thing, how to return the sheet names. In order to return the sheet names, I can just call the method, get sheet names, and I can specify the file name, and this is going to return the sheet names for me. So guys, as they say, knowledge is power. And there is no better way to empower your users and your managers by sharing the data in a right way where they can easily consume and digest that data. I hope from this video, you now have learned as what are the tricks that is available in our programming language, which will help us in automate the task in Excel sheet. So thank you so much guys for staying with me till the end. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If yes, please let us know in the comment section. I look forward to seeing you next time.